Hello, welcome to the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. Just a few quick housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Plus, your cameras and microphones are off, so the panelists can't see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening. Be sure to sign up for more at the same place that you signed up for this one, if you, ha if you haven't done so already. And this presentation is being recorded. It'll be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash Illinois. Now, this is a six by six session named that way because it's six schools presenting for six minutes each. You cannot get all of the information about any school within six minutes. This is just a little taste of each school. Think of it as an appetizer to get you ready and to whet your appetite for more. And if you want to follow up and get more information about an individual school, you'll get contact information from each of them. And that's where you'll get ideas from this session. So that's what the, the point of these are, is to give you an idea about each school. All right, I've gotten the housekeeping out of the way, so I'm gonna get out of the way now and turn it over to our first presentation, a representative from Governor State University. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having us. Um, so I'm Laura Medina, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about Governor State University. So some quick facts about GSU. We have nearly about 5,000 students currently enrolled. Uh, we cap our classroom sizes at 30 students to keep a 12 to one student to faculty ratio. We represent 25 countries. We're the number one safest campus in Illinois and the eighth safest campus in the US. Uh, we celebrate over 50,000 alumni. We are a 750 acre campus. And we also have over 70 student organizations and clubs, including our athletic teams. We're located in the south suburbs of Chicago. Um, students can choose to either commute to our campus or they can live on campus at our Prairie Place. So here are some examples of our units. Each of these units are designed to accommodate students of all class levels. Uh, the first one is a suite, which is a shared bedroom uh, connected with a bathroom to another shared bedroom. And this is a two bedroom apartment. We also have four bedroom apartments available where students get their individual bedrooms and a shared living room, kitchen and bathroom. All incoming students at GSU have the opportunity to save on tuition with our AIM High scholarship. So if you qualify, uh, you can earn up to six grand annually, depending on your GPA. So for instance, if you qualify and you have a GPA over 3.5, you can earn up to 6,000 per year each year you're at GSU. Or if you have a GPA at a 2.75 to a 3.49, you can earn up to 4,000 per year each year you're at GSU. Some of the admissions requirements at GSU is pretty similar for freshmen and transfer students. So for freshmen, we'll need a 2.0 unweighted GPA on a 4.0 scale, official high school transcripts or GED. And we are test optional for this upcoming fall semester. So if you have taken the ACT or SAT, um, you're not required to submit those scores, but you can if you choose. For transfer students, we'll also need a 2.0 or higher cumulative GPA, at least 24 more semester credit hours of college coursework, and uh, those official transcripts from all previously attended colleges or universities. There's many ways to get in touch with us here at admissions. You could schedule a virtual admission appointment or chat on our website with a admissions counselor or take a tour of our campus and view videos of our housing. We also have bilingual recruiters available for Spanish speaking individuals. Um, and you can find this information on our website at www.govsd.edu slash admissions. And I'll also post this in the chat as well. And I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Jessica, part of our dual degree program. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Lauren. I um, do not have a slide as to not add to any time and transition there, but I am uh, representing our dual degree program. And what that is is for students in uh, planning to attend any one of our 17 community college partners, which Wabonzi Community College is one of those partners, including the seven city colleges of Chicago, COD, Harper, uh, Triton, Morton, and then of course our neighboring schools, Prairie State, South Suburban, Kankakee, Moraine, Juliet, uh, all these great schools. So if you're planning on attending college first, 
The dual degree program is a no cost option for you to enroll and join and become part of the governor state kind of family while you are working on your associate's degree. We will help you plan those courses, make sure that you're taking the right classes that will transfer into your future major. And when it is time to transfer, we have uh, several amazing scholarships that are exclusive to only dual degree program students. One is in um, need-based based on Pell eligibility. Another is honors based on PTK or honors program involvement, as well as a third that is with our City Colleges of Chicago specifically and the STAR Scholars Program. So those are exclusive only to dual degree program students. So it's highly recommended to enroll in even your first semester to reach out to the dual degree program. Uh, and we can connect once you've established 12 credit hours at the community college, get you enrolled and move forward with making sure that you, you have all of your information when it is time to transfer, you know, graduate and transfer towards your bachelor's degree. Um, the Again, it's no cost. Uh, it is through 17 different colleges. It will work with any major at Governor State, any of our undergraduate majors. We will be able to match your associate's degree and try to have you transfer and graduate with the bachelor's in as little time as possible. For, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the AIM High Scholarships, uh, you know, DDP students are also able to participate in that. Um, we have a different transfer specialist for each of the community colleges to really focus on that catalog and to make sure that those transfer classes um, are appropriate for what you're looking to do. Uh, making sure we're still on time. Yeah, we're good on time. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the dual degree program, we have a courting ceremony once you do transfer over, as well as when you graduate with the bachelor's degree. So it's very much a program family, larger than life element to your transfer to Governor State. And as Lauren said, uh, our very large po uh, portion of our population is transfer. We, got, uh, we are a four-year institution, but just became so fairly recently. So the dual degree program and our transfer students are very a prominent force on our campus, and DDP looks to help to make sure that you find your way there. So um, uh, Lauren, is there any other last minute things? Um, I think that's it. But if you have any questions, please use the Q&A. And I'll put the website. Thank you very much. And well, I'm just going to repeat it, even though I don't have to, because they took care of that. But use the Q&A if you have any questions. And if it's for a specific school, just name the school in your question. At, next up, we'll hear from Kansas State University. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. I'm so excited to talk to you about K-State. Uh, my name is Palma Roman. I'm an admissions representative and I graduated from K-State or Kansas State University in May of 2019 with my degree in athletic training and a minor in kinesiology. So excited to be here today to get to talk to you guys. Um, I'm originally based in the Chicago area, but I work with students um, surrounding Illinois as well. But if you're not familiar with K-State, it is a nationally recognized public research institution. Um, we provide students with over 250 different majors and 50 academic minors to choose from. We're located in the scenic Flint Hills of Kansas, specifically in Manhattan. So we're a classic college town with you know, big city amenities. And then K-State, we'll talk a little bit. Let me go ahead and change the slide real quick. But these are some of our quick, fast facts. K-State has been ranked as one of the top 10 best schools in the nation by the Princeton Review for, happy and, for having the happiest students, counseling services, health services, um, quality of life, athletic facilities, and town gown relationships. Um, we offer 16 division sports, and we are part of the Big 12 Conference, and you can catch us cheering on the Wildcats doing the number one pregame tradition in the Big 12 um, for game days. But the university places emphasis on student success by hosting um, some activities such as the largest career fair, prepping our students, um, offering over 500 different student organizations for students to get involved in. And as you can see here, that's a direct uh, correlation with our 97% of job or continuing education placement rate, which means that 97% of our graduates within six months are either pursuing a job or pursuing further education. Um, but a little bit more is we have over 22,000 students um, and then about 18,000 of those are gonna be our undergraduate students, but we still have an 18 to one student to faculty ratio, which means not only are you gonna to get to know your professors, but more importantly, your professors will get to know you. And then, so I mentioned earlier that we have over 250 different academic majors, and some of those are going to be in agriculture, architecture, planning and design, arts and sciences, business, education, engineering, health and human sciences, and then we have our technology and aviation, which is 
are, or it's also known as Polytechnic for anyone wanting to be a pilot or some other technology based majors. And then we also have a vet med school for students who want to be veterinarians. Um, and then, like I mentioned, those 50 minors, you can really take the time to customize your degree. Some things that you'll see as uh, life as a wildcat is students are involved in undergraduate research. I mentioned those 500, 500 clubs and organizations and then Greek life as well, if you're interested. So our scholarships that we have, so we have our general university awards. We have, we had test optional awards this year because we knew COVID was a thing. And then I always recommend students filling out that free application for federal student aid um, that is, opens up in October 1st. And for us, it's always due December 1. And then our K-State Scholarship Network, which is another opportunity that students can have when wanting to look for more scholarships at K-State. I wanna talk specifically about our Midwestern Exchange Program, which um, is for students from Illinois and other surrounding states. Um, for students to receive this, they just have to have a 3.25 high school GPA and a 22 ACT or 1100 SAT. And that's about a $44,000 reward over the four years there. And then for any students that their parents attended K-State, we have our Heritage Scholarship or grandparents, and they just have to have a 3.0 high school GPA. Um, and that's a $12,000 award. And that's renewable as long as students keep that 3.0. And then with these scholarships, students just have to make sure that they apply for the priority date before that priority date. Um, this isn't separate from any other application. It just goes with applying to K-State. Um, our priority date is December 1 for students that are interested that are juniors, about to be seniors. And then the steps to apply to K-State for incoming freshmen, you neither need one of the, you need to meet either one of these three different um, options. So either have a 3.25 high school GPA or have a 21 ACT or a 1060 SAT. We are test optional. Um, we moved to be test optional before COVID and we're continuing that. And um, one thing to keep in mind again is that priority date. We are on the Common App if um, I know a lot of out of state students like to apply through there. So you can find us on there as well. And then lastly, I hope that with this bit of information, you're able to visit us. You can visit us in person. We are offering on-campus visits or virtual, and you can find those opportunities on our website at k-state.edu slash visit. And like I mentioned, I am the admissions representative, so you can get connected with me by emailing me at kstate9 at k-state.edu or um, that number. And you can also schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me, whether it's a Zoom or a phone call on my Calendly to get to learn more about K-State. But I hope to connect with some of you. And again, thanks for being here today. Thank you very much. And again, you can use the Q&A to ask questions of our representatives right now, or uh, also feel free to reach out to them. They're all sharing contact info with you. You're getting kind of a taste of each school. So use that to, if you if it sparks your interest to follow up. Up next, we will hear from the representative from Wabansi Community College. Sorry about that, let's get going here. Okay, can everybody see this? Yes, we can also see the notes too. All right, there we go. Okay, so, well, thank you for having us. Uh, before we get started, we just wanna talk a little bit about who we are. So Wabansi Community College is a public two-year community college. We're located about an hour outside of Chicago. Our institution was established in 1966 and we are actually a four campus network. So the photo that you're seeing here on our presentation is our main campus, our Sugar Grove campus. This photo was taken from uh, pretty much the middle of campus. So there's quite a bit more to go um, if you were looking in the other direction or beyond the buildings that you see in this picture. We also have campuses in Aurora downtown. Aurora is one of the largest cities in the state of Illinois. Um, we have campuses at Aurora Fox Valley, which if you're from the area is on the Copley Hospital campus campus and is home to our healthcare programs. And then we also have an, a campus in Plano, Illinois, which is about 10, 15 minutes further west of us. And that is our innovation and design center. So home to several of our programs, most notably cybersecurity and welding. The college offers both transfer and uh, CTE or career and technical education programs. So we'll talk a little bit about what specific programs there are. 
a little bit about our students. So um, the majority of our students, 80% are actually enrolled part time. So below that 12 credit hour threshold that is sometimes referred to when institutions talk about whether you're going to be a full time or a part time student, 20% of our students are enrolled full time. As far as our male female ratio, so slightly higher with females, 55%, 45% male. The number of credit students, so 12,859, that tends to be a surprise for people. Um, you don't typically necessarily think that community colleges have that large of a student body, but we most definitely do. And the average age of our credit student is actually 23. So one of the great things about classes at Wabadzi is that there will be a lot of diversity in your classes, um, not only with age, but from different backgrounds. Um, we have a very large district that our college serves. So uh, students who are from very urban sorts of areas versus some who are from very rural sorts of areas. So you'll find uh, a great deal of difference between your classmates and, and gives you an opportunity to learn a lot from them and their experiences. So why Wabansi? These are four of the pillars that we really like to emphasize and withhold within the institution. So flexibility um, within that area, we're very affordable. So um, we charge by the credit hour. We will talk a little bit more about the specifics with that later on, but we're an affordable choice to get started with your education and finish those general education courses that everybody has to have while they're in the process of pursuing their bachelor's degree. We're open enrollment admissions, so uh, we do not require any minimum test scores for being able to take um, or be admitted into the college. As soon as you fill out our new student application, you are able to take classes with us. We do have specific courses that require a um, test score to be able to enroll in them. There's a minimum test score uh, for a specific class, but not for acceptance into the institution. The credits are transferable. So as Governor State mentioned, um, you know they're, they're one of our neighbors here in the state of Illinois. We send a number of students there. NIU, who you'll hear from in just a bit, is literally our neighbor about 20 minutes up the highway from us. We send quite a few students there as well, but we send students all over the country as well. There's both full-time and part-time options available. Quality, so our professors are renowned professors within their programs, they're practitioners within their fields. So you'll learn from them and their real life experiences um, from working in their fields. So support, as I mentioned before, we're a very diverse campus and we have a lot of opportunities for campus involvement. So um, one of the things typically that students ask about attending a community college is how can I get involved because community colleges are typically not residential campuses. Um, we'll talk a little bit about clubs, activities and sports in just a moment. And then again, with the affordability, the base tuition rate for us is very low. And in addition to having low tuition, we do have a number of financial aid and scholarship opportunities available to bring that cost down even more. So our career focus programs, these are for students who are thinking that maybe a four year degree is not for them. They're a little bit more interested in finishing courses that are very specific to their major and getting out into the workforce a little bit quicker. So these are all programs where that's an option. Um, most of these programs are not designed to transfer to a four year school, but there are a few within here where there's a four year option. Um, the majority of the courses within these programs are specific to that area that you want to study, because if we want you to be employable once you finish that degree, um, you know, the, the skills that you need to build are within your field. These courses or programs can range from one semester to two years, depending on the program. So there's a lot of variety within there as well. Our transfer program. So these are just a few of the more popular programs that students um, pursue for transfer programs, but really any major that you're considering, there's something that you can do to start within that major at the community college um, within those general education requirements. So extracurricular activities, we are part of NJCAA for our um, athletic competitions. So division one sports, men's soccer, women's soccer, men's cross country, women's cross country, men's tennis, women's tennis. We also have volleyball, basketball for both men and women, softball and the golf is only for the guys. Um, and we do have a co-ed cheerleading uh, squad as well as esports. We have over 44 student clubs and organizations as well, everything from honor societies to uh, clubs that are tied to whatever your specific discipline is to just special interest sorts of clubs as well. Tuition and fees for the 2021-22 academic year is $140 per credit hour. Um, if you have a three credit class, which most of ours are, we're at 420 a class. And so if you're full time, you're looking at 1680 a semester. Flexible payment plans are available as well as financial aid through the FAFSA or the Illinois application for alternative financial aid. 
And then getting started, if you are interested in pursuing Wabansi, the first thing that you would need to do is fill out our new student application at wabansi.edu slash apply. Our summer registration is open and fall opens Monday, May 3rd. Thank you and we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. And again, questions can be asked using the Q&A button at any time for any of our representatives. Up next, we will hear from the University of Toledo. All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in today. My name is Johnny Horn, and I am a senior admission counselor at the University of Toledo. I am also a 2018 graduate of the University of Toledo, so I'm really excited to talk about admissions, but also tie in my student experience a little bit to hopefully get you excited. Uh, so the University of Toledo is located in Ohio, about four hours from the metro Chicago area. Um, so it's not too far of a drive. I like to say you get that away from home feeling, of course, from being four hours away, but it's really easy for you to get back home if you need to. We are a really diverse campus as well. Our students come from all over. We have 43 different states and 88 different countries represented in our student population. Um, and we have about a mid-sized campus. Again, I think it's the perfect perfect size because you get all the excitement of a large campus. We are a division one athletic university. Um, so if you like that rah-rah athletic experience, we have that. We also have 400 organizations for you to be a part of, nine residence halls for you to choose from on campus. But in the classroom, we try to keep things as small as possible. Our average class size is about 31 students per class and our student to faculty ratio is 20 to one. We serve a great number of first in the family to attend college as well. So we really wanna make sure students feel supported in the admission process. And as of course, when they become students here as well. So I'm happy to work with all of the Illinois students. Um, and then once you get here, there are a number of support systems that pick up for you. We are also really diverse in our academic offering. So we're actually one of 27 universities in the country to be as comprehensive as we are. So that means we have um, undergraduate programs, we have graduate programs and professional programs. So if you're interested in business or engineering, the health sciences like nursing or, or pharmacy, if you're interested in education or the humanities or um, music or theater, we pretty much have it all, which which makes us a great program for students who do know what they want to do, or if you're still figuring it out, it's really easy to switch your major um, if you need to once you start here. For our professional programs, we do have pathways for you to continue your education at the University of Toledo. Um, so we have a back to MD program for students who are interested in attending medical school. We have a pharmacy contingent admission program for high school seniors to apply directly to our PharmD program. And then we also have a three plus three program with our law school um, for students to cut down on the time it takes to complete a bachelor's degree and a JD law degree. All of our academic programs have some form of hands-on learning. So um, as a psychology student, I was involved in undergraduate research and I also studied abroad. Um, our programs like business and engineering have required um, internships and co-ops that students have to complete. Um, and the list goes on and on when it comes to what students do outside of the classroom to give them that experience that makes them employable after graduation. I also want to touch a little bit on our campus community. Um, so with the amount of students that we have that are coming from all over the place, our student organizations are very diverse. We offer a lot of different things for students to be involved in. If you're looking for an academic or social fraternity or sorority, we have it. If you want to play a club sport, um, if you're interested in cultural organization or professional organization, pretty much anything that you, you can think of, like random things like the hot chocolate level club, we definitely have um, something for everyone. Um, I will also mention as a out of state student, you will be with us for at least two years on campus. And again, we have nine residence hall options for you, including our honors residence halls. Um, we have a first year residence hall. 
um, which is more of a traditional style. We also have suite style residence halls, and we like to give students a lot of choice in where they live. So um, you will really shape your student experience. We're very student-centered at the University of Toledo, so um, you'll have a lot of say in what you're doing um, while you're a student here. I also want to touch on scholarships really quickly. Um, we have merit scholarships for students who are, um, who are from out of state. So uh, our out of state students are considered for our Rocket Nation scholarship that pretty much covers our out of state surcharge, plus an additional scholarship um, based on GPA or GPA and test scores, depending on how you apply. So those range from starting at 9,500 to um, 14,500. So definitely a lot that you can take off of tuition with that. We also have competitive programs like our presidential scholarship, which is our full ride program at the University of Toledo. Um, all of our academic programs have additional scholarships that students can apply for. So we'll, we're really focused on helping students find funding and keeping the student loan debt down for our students. Hopefully we've, I've gotten you excited and you want to learn more um, and eventually apply to the University of Toledo. Our application will open on August 1st. Um, you can apply on our website or through the Common App. And then we're also going to be test optional um, for this upcoming year. So I would definitely encourage you to reach out to me before deciding how to apply. I want to make sure you're maximizing your admission and scholarship opportunities. We also have a scholarship calculator available on our website, so that will help you figure out what you qualify for in scholarship based on how you apply to the University of Toledo. Um, that is all for me. Here's my contact information. I'll also put it in the chat. Um, and like everyone else, please, everyone else said, please feel free to use the Q&A for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. And at the risk of being repetitive, well, too late. Uh, the Q&A is a great place to ask questions. And if it's for a specific school, just make sure to name the school in your question. Up next, we'll move along to the representative from Iowa State University. Kelly, you're still muted. There we go. Technical difficulties. I'm sorry, everyone. Let me get this fixed. I'm sorry, guys. My screen keeps freezing. I apologize. In the interest of time, we could move forward and come back for, to you unless you've got that fixed. I think I've got it fixed. Sorry about right. that, everyone. Thank you so much. <laughs> Always works when it's your turn, right? I apologize for that. Hi, everyone. My name is Kelly Allen. I am one of two regional representatives for Iowa State University that's based here in the Chicago area. I live in the far northwest suburbs and my colleague Sarah Liz, excuse me, not Sarah Liz, my colleague um, does live in this suburban, in the city of Chicago. Um, we do have two of us based here. We're both alumni of the university, so we're more than happy to be stationed here for a school that we both went to. It's pretty exciting. We are the quintessential college town that you could think of um, in the state of Iowa. We do have a pretty residential feel to it. It's very much a pedestrian place. There are roads on campus, but there's not many to drive on. So you get pretty much anywhere you need to go, as you can see in this picture, by either walking or riding a bike, there is a bus system that skirts the entire campus that students can ride for free that gets them around where they need to go on those rainy, snowy, whatever days that you don't feel like walking, but also gets you to within a two to three block a walk of anywhere in the city of Ames. So Target runs, Walmart runs, things like that are all easily done by bus. We don't say you can't bring a car, but it truly is not worth it because you don't have a place to park right there on campus. Since everything is so easy to get around, it's not anything you want to mess with, we encourage you to not bring a car, but again, you don't have to not do that if you want to bring it. 
Um, Illinois students are the second largest total group on campus. We range about 32,000 students total. Illinois being the second biggest group of those right behind native Iowans and of the Illinois contingency, people from the city of Chicago and the surrounding suburbs are the biggest portion of that. So we do say that you're probably gonna trip over somebody from somewhere in the Chicago area every day of your life should you come to Iowa State. There's just that many students from this area. Give you an idea too of where we're located. We're about a four and a half to six hour drive from the Chicago area, depending on where you're leaving from. Again, I live in the Northwest suburbs. It takes me about five and a half hours to get to campus. And the running joke is you drive to Des Moines and take a right, which is pretty accurate. You're on pretty much a cruise control type of a situation. Very easy to get where you need to go by the interstate. And then just north of Des Moines is the city of Ames where Iowa State is. A couple of big suburban, excuse me, metro hubs not too far from the city of Ames, about three and a half hours north is the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. A three and a half hours south is Kansas City. So some pretty big areas that are not that terribly far away for internships, co-ops and things like that as well. We have a lot of FERPs associated with Iowa State University. Uh, we are a land grant university, one of the first schools in the country that assigned onto the land grant um, process with, um, excuse me, with um, President Abraham Lincoln back in the 1800s. We're the first public veterinary school in the country as well. Um, we are very much a, a research university, a tier one research university that freshmen can be involved in research as early as their freshman year should they want to, which is kind of a nice thing to know. And we do have a lot of science um, STEM based programs that we are very well known for, but we're kind of a quirky s and school where we do have a full college of business and a college of design as well. You don't tend to find those very much at um, s and schools. Oftentimes that's more than 75 to 90% engineering and sciences. So we're kind of different in that regard. Um, we also have six undergraduate colleges, which I'll talk about in a second, but each of those colleges has one, if not two career fairs that they do offer for students that are enrolled at the university, giving you a chance to meet and mix and mingle with people in industry and have questions answered directly from them. They come to you rather than you having to seek them out, which is kind of a nice thing to have. About 32,000 students total. Um, also kind of different too is that you think STEM, you're not gonna think of apparel merchandising and design, but it is very strong on our campus and one of the top five programs in the country. This also gives you a little list of what I was talking about, the six undergraduate colleges, which are right here. Um, agriculture and life science, business, design, engineering, which is home to 14 engineering majors, one of the biggest engineering programs in the country, not the biggest, but one of the biggest. The College of Human Sciences is also home to the School of Education and the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, which is home to the Greenlee School of Journalism, on which I'm an alum. So six colleges, two schools, and more than 100 programs of study to choose from. Of this list, about just shy of 60 of those programs are classified as STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. So pretty strong in those areas and a lot of things for you to choose from for sure. We are very much, again, a residential campus. We feel very much like a suburb, which is I think what appeals to people from the Chicago area. It feels very similar to what they've left. About 35 to 40,000 permanent residents living in the city of Ames. So by the time you combine the academic population of people coming to campus uh, for studies. And then you combine that with the people who live there year round, it's about you know, 70 some thousand people. We don't require students to live on campus. We do strongly encourage it to the point that we're annoying, probably on purpose. We have 17 different residence halls you can choose from. There are some settings for people who are upper division as far as 19 and older, or truly upper division like juniors and seniors. There's apartment style living as well. Um, about 14 to 15 percent of our student population are in the fraternities and sororities in the Greek system. So quite a lot to choose from that way. And more than 95 percent of our students do choose to live on campus, even though we don't require it. You will never go hungry. There's 24 different locations to have something to eat, getting close to a couple of those being 24 seven as far as having a place to go and grab a snack while you're studying. There's five major residence hall dining centers and a variety of other coffee shops and smaller places as well. As far as how you apply to you know, the university and what we're looking for, we're looking for four years of English, three years of science, three years of math, two years of social studies. And if you're going into a major in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, there's an additional year of social studies and two years of a single foreign language. We put all that information as far as those core courses in this formula to calculate a score for you. That would take your ACT or SAT score. If you have it, you're not required to provide one because we are test optional again for the fall 22 class, just like we were for this current class. 
um, but you do have the ability to write it to us should you want to. And then we have um, merit scholarship information. You can be considered for those scholarships automatically when you apply and get accepted. AP scores as well, fours and fives almost earn you some kind of college credit. And then our transit system shows dual credit classes and things like that and how that would transfer to your program of study. We'll scoot past this because we're running a little long, $40 application fee. One app is the formula for all other scholarships that are not merit-based, and that's me. So feel free to reach out to me. I will put information in the chat as far as campus visits as well. And thank you so much for having, giving me a chance to get catched up with the, uh, the technology. I apologize for that, but thank you for joining us. No worries, thank you very much. And again, questions can be asked using the Q&A button on your screen for any of our representatives. And uh, also pay attention to the chat as the representatives are sending you information there like links and contact info that you will find handy if you want to follow up from what you learned today during this session. Up next, we will hear from Northern Illinois University. Good evening, welcome. My name is Siobhan Porter and I will be discussing Northern Illinois University, which is also my alma mater. So I'm just going to start quickly here and go from there. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Are you all able to see what I'm sharing? Sorry. See the PowerPoint, but it's not as a presentation right now. Right, right. I don't know. Maybe I selected the wrong window. I didn't though. Um, try presenting live. Okay. Yvonne, I'll share my screen. Oh, that'd be great. Thanks, Lupe. Uh, all right, let me stop sharing. We were going so well for so long. <laughs> we get to the last two, and here we go. So uh, again, my apologies. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and get started while we're waiting for Lupe to load it. Um, so again, uh, Siobhan Porter, a freshman admissions counselor, joined by Lupe Flores, who is also a freshman admissions counselor. Um, to talk a little bit about NIU, you may have heard of us. We're located in the college town of DeKalb, Illinois, 65 miles west of Chicago. So we have a really great location. I think that being where we are, we're a, a little over an hour outside the city. Um, we are close to Rockford as well. And our backyard is essentially that whole suburban corridor, which is really great for our students once it's time for them to uh, look at internships or job opportunities. Um, the majority of sort of the commerce and the major stuff that's happening in our state is right in our backyard. So our students are very connected to um, the major hospital systems in our state, major public uh, school um, systems, and of course, all the major corporations that are here. I wanna go to the next slide. Um, we have about 17,000 students at NIU. So we're a nice medium-sized school on the larger size of medium, but we also have uh, 16 different sports for men and women in which we're division one, so we do compete in that top tier uh, of collegiate athletic competition in the country. We're in the Mid-America Conference. And a cool thing about NIU is you actually are able to uh, walk into any athletic event on campus for free. Your student uh, ID card is your ticket into any athletic event, whether that's football, soccer, basketball, baseball, wrestling, volleyball, any of these sports uh, in the D1 arena, arena. Or we also have a number of D2 uh, and D3 sports as well. So uh, we have over 100 different areas of study that you can choose from at NIU. Each one is broken down into six, uh, one of six different academic colleges. When you apply to NIU, you can either apply to a specific major if you know exactly what you want to do, or you can choose undecided within one of these six undergraduate colleges. So it gives you a little bit of flexibility to narrow things down without really identifying one thing in particular for sure. Um, or you can apply undecided any college and we'll give you help and support with that. But to give you an example, the College of Business is gonna have majors like accountancy, one of our top ranked programs, business administration, marketing management, uh, 
programs of that nature. We also have a really strong entrepreneurship minor and secondary program for that. So um, definitely our College of Business is very well known and respected at NIU. Uh, the College of Health and Human Sciences has a number of majors. Um, oh, looks like I lost, I lost my slide there, but that's okay. Um, uh, pretty much I would say feel confident that if you come to NIU, you should be able to pick something that really kind of speaks to you because we do have a, quite a variety of majors. Uh, I know several of my colleagues have mentioned this as well about their institutions, but one thing that I think NIU really overall is fairly unique about is the opportunity for freshmen even to do research. Um, so we've got this wonderful program called Research Rookies. We also help our students fund different opportunities to take their, their studies outside the classroom. So we have the Student Engagement Fund, all of these variety of um, opportunities for our students to kind of get outside of the classroom. That really is at the core of what our educational philosophy is. Whatever you're going to study at NIU, we want you to take advantage of something that will take you outside of the classroom, whether that's research, getting into a research lab, study abroad, um, internships, things of that nature. You can go ahead to the next slide. Um, so NIU is pretty proud of the fact that we have a pretty diverse uh, student population. So we, to support that group of students, um, all of our students, I should say, we have not one and not two, but actually six different cultural resource centers. So we've got the Asian American Center, Center for Black Studies, Disability Resource Center, Latino Resource Center, Gender and Sexuality Resource Center, and the Military and Veteran Services. These are physical locations on campus where students can go and find everything from met like peer mentoring programs, tutoring programs, uh, a variety of outside interests like special um, like student organizations. There are also um, social events. So it's really a very um, a big part of what makes NIU's campus the vibrant, uh, multicultural, and diverse um, place that it is. You can move ahead. So a few things about, oh, Lupe, you can move ahead, I'm sorry. Um, I'm not, oh, there we go, residence halls. Um, our students will be living at least for the first year on the resident on a, on a residence hall, but they are able to choose which type of floor they want, and you can also choose which uh, roommate if you if you know someone else will be attending. You can move forward. So um, we have made everything very easy to, for you to apply. There is no application fee. We are test-free institutions, so if you've got a 3.0 cumulative GPA on a 4.0 scale, you're guaranteed admission to NIU. Um, and you, there are two ways for you to apply. You can visit our website, or you can find us on the Common App. Well, we're just about at time here. Oh, sure. Okay. It, was there one more thing? Um, okay, so our scholarships are pretty competitive. Uh, we do have merit scholarships that you'll see here. And overall, this is just a very brief taste of what you'll find at NIU. So we hope that you'll join us in a virtual tour uh, or at one of our events on campus soon. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And I would like to invite all of our representatives to come back on screen. And we'll do a very quick uh, Q&A. We'll have them answer in the same order that they presented. I get to play talk show host here, but simple question. What one piece of advice would you give someone going through the college search process right now? We'll start with Governor State University. Yeah, I, I would say um, uh, the piece of advice I would give is um, look at all your options, see where your interest best lies, and Take a look at those tuition costs and where you're ready to start. Um, if you're, some people are ready to jump into a four-year university and some people aren't. And if you're not sure about those options, you could come talk to uh, myself or Jessica with DDP and we could talk about those options with you. Kansas State University. Kind of piggy off of what Lauren said about keeping your options open, 
a way to kind of narrow it down as well as you go more and more into your college search is to visit campus. Um, that's one of the best ways to really get a feel for what campus is like. I always tell my students when they visit, what is what are the students like on campus? Are they wearing purple? Are they proud to be here? Are people nice? Like what's the atmosphere? And that'll also help you in finding your best fit. Wansi Community College. I would also say to the extent that you're able in the COVID environment, visit any of the campuses that you're considering. You'll be spending a lot of time and a lot of money in your investment in your college education and really just kind of pay attention to that voice when you're on campus of which one feels like home. University of Toledo. I would add to stay organized during your, your college admission search. You know, you're going to get a lot of information from different colleges. We all have different deadlines for our scholarships and for admission. So the more organized you are, the better off you'll be, the more opportunities you'll have. Um, so that's my piece. Iowa State University. I would agree with what Paloma was saying about visiting as much as you're able. I know that that's a little bit of a challenge. And also what Johnny was saying about staying organized. One of the best ways to do that is to get an email address that is for nothing but college. Put that on your college application, your app, your um, scholarship applications, and check it regularly all the time. We send you tons of things. And if you know that's all that's going to that email address, it makes it easier to make sure you're not missing deadlines. Northern Illinois University. Yeah, I would definitely agree with everything that's been said and also just add, uh, don't forget to reach out to us. This is exactly what we're here for, the admissions counselors. Every university has uh, a whole team waiting to connect with you and we're happy to meet with your family and anyone else who's helping you make that decision. Um, so don't feel like you have to get everything in one shot. Ideally, you'll be communicating with us fairly regularly through the whole process. Well, thank you all for that advice and also sharing all of the information about your schools. And I wanna thank our attendees for joining us. When you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, there are more sessions coming up, including one in about 14 minutes or so. Be sure to sign up for more sessions if you've not done so already at the same place you signed up for this one. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Illinois. Once again, thank you to all of our panelists for joining us for this session. Thank you all for attending. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. Take care.